If you hire an event planner for an important event and they f up the event, are you gonna hire them again? No. Bro, f working with a coach, bro. I ain't working with nobody, bro. I might never work with a coach again. It's not a battle of who looks best or who's heaviest in the offseason. At the show, I was the, like, this was the worst showing I've had. Hey guys, even here and in today's video, we got something juicy, something interesting. Quinton Araya fired Matt Jensen and he explains everything, why it happened, why it is a long story, it's actually like six or seven stories, I'm gonna play it all for you later, but first we gotta say a couple of things, I mean you guys saw what happened at the New York Pro, I mean I made a whole video about it, you can watch it on my channel, but this is the thumbnail of it and basically he was literally better two freaking years ago than he was this year. And in the offseason, he looked like he put on a ton of muscle. He definitely looked so much bigger, so much improved, that pretty much everybody had him in their top three, basically. Some people even had him second or even first. Even winning the New York Pro and beating Nick Walker. And he thought he was gonna do it. He felt really confident about it. In the end, you know what happened? He looked so much smaller, super, super flat, super small, like a classic bodybuilder, very close to his actual classic physique weight cap, like 20 pounds short. So, you know, something went wrong along the way, and Matt Jensen didn't figure it out. He didn't figure it out in time to prevent this from happening. Uh, from what I heard from Quinton in his interviews, he was doing way more cardio this year than ever before. He was doing like almost two hours every single day, which in my opinion could be, should be, usually is excessive, especially for an open bodybuilder. But you know, that's Matt's approach. He did whatever he thought he's the best. And apparently he got it wrong, like very, very much wrong. I thought these two guys are gonna go together for a couple of more shows to try to fix this, but Quinton saw no sense in that, and he decided to continue by himself. But what he said about Matt in these stories was very, very interesting. Let me show it to you guys, a shorter version, I cut out the not important parts. Let's check it out. You know, I've seen the work Matt did with, you know, some of his athletes in the off-seasons, like, that's the guy. That's my guy. And the off-season was amazing, man. Like, the off-season was so good. And if you look at pictures or videos from the off-season, you can see, like, I put on a ton of tissue. You know, and, like, I think everybody thought I was probably going to be a problem this year. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's not a battle of who looks best or who's heaviest in the off-season. It's a battle of who looks best on the day of the show. And at the show, I was, the, like, this was the worst showing I've had. You know, I was worse than I was two years ago. I was smaller. My legs were skinny and I was less conditioned. So listen, somewhere along the way, something got fucked up. Now, if you hire an event planner for an important event and they fuck up the event, are you gonna hire them again? Fuck no. On a personal level, of course, I wanted to. And I, 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 that's the direction I was going at first. I'm like, we're gonna do this, we're gonna figure it out. But every day that went by, I'm just like, I, I don't get how we missed this bad, you know? And uh, yeah, it's upsetting, I'm extremely disappointed. I, I, I think I'm leaving, I don't regret the decision because I think when I fill out, you know, I'll finally be able to show all the work that we put in the off season. But I'm not, bro, f working with a coach, bro. I ain't working with nobody, bro. Like, after what happened and what I expected and after going that wrong, like, you expect me to just jump into the with another co hell no bro and i'm just being transparent and telling you guys what happened man keep y'all in the loop what's going on in my life baby that's all it is man i'm not high i'm just happy bro do you think i'm confident that somebody else that i don't know that's not familiar with my body is gonna figure it out in two weeks <laughs> Yo, that bro hell no i ain't hiring bro i might never work with a coach again and there you go guys, Matt Jensen and Quinton Raya parted their ways, um, as far as the way uh, Quinton handled the situation, I mean, I think he probably could have done a better job just making a post, thanking Matt for his services or something like that, but, you know, he was honest, you know, he was, he was honest, he just said it exactly how he felt, he shared it with us, with his fans, with his followers, and that's it, that's just the way it is. I mean, did he insult Matt in any way? No, no, it's nothing like Samson and Miller's situation. It's much different. This is just, you know, it's much cleaner. So, it is what it is. This guy stopped working and apparently 
Quinton is not gonna find a different coach, he's not gonna go back to Dorian Hamilton, he's not gonna stop his competitive season, he's gonna try and uh, look better next show by himself. Therefore, he posted this story as well. The left is when he was working with Matt Jensen, and the, and the right is now that he's working alone. I think the improvements are pretty visible. I think he's looking much fuller now and you know, overall better. Uh, he says on the left, when he was working with Matt, of course, he was doing almost two hours of cardio every every single day, guys. That's 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 pretty. That's a lot. That's really a lot. That's what you do when you're late, when you're trying to somehow get in shape. But, you know, with some guys it can work, they don't lose muscle, but apparently it was not the case with Quint. And now he says uh, less stress, uh, great sleep, great training, burning more calories during cardio, and only doing 30 minutes of cardio, only 4 to 5 days a week. And he has great recovery and no joint pain. So yeah, obviously he feels like he knows his body better than any coach, better than Matt Jensen, and he feels confident that he's gonna bring something better next time he competes. We'll see, I'm really curious to see what he can bring by himself. But yeah, I gotta say, I agree with him. What Matt did with him was bad. Could he figure it out next year? Maybe yes, maybe no. But this year, he completely messed it up. This was like one of his worst works of all time. I'm curious to hear Matt's side as well. Maybe there is another side of his story. Maybe Quint was doing something without Matt's uh, approval, but I don't think so. I think uh, Quint was just like a robot here, he was doing exactly what he was told, and Matt is the one who messed it up. That's my opinion, whatever you guys think, tell me down below. Hopefully, Quint will go back to Dorian Hamilton, I think that's the right call. Prepping himself, pff, I don't know, that's tough. That's almost a mission impossible, but we'll see what he's gonna do. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. Alright, next up, we got a little physique update. I, at least I think this is a physique update from Regan Grimes. But the caption is important here, he says... When you have a dream, you never give up. Because recently, on Jay Cutler's podcast, he was talking about potentially retiring, or was he talking about it, or was it just a clickbait title? I'm not even sure at this point, but, you know, there was talk about Regan actually quitting, giving up on his dream. And here he says he has no intention of doing that. And as you can see in this, in this photo, he looks... I would say very lean for the offseason. Is this the right thing to do? Should he blow up? I mean, Quint blew up and then he lost everything he gained. So maybe this approach is actually better, at least for some people. Maybe he knows what he's doing. Maybe he's going to take his time, those two years, as he plans to put on a little bit of muscle every, every month. Stay lean, stay sharp, not push for the mass too hard, not lose the lines and shape and so on, and you know, two years is a long time, and I believe he can make progress in those two years, he already made a lot of progress in the past, I don't know how many years, like every year he did look bigger and better and he was heavier, so yeah, he can make progress, uh, is it gonna be enough progress in two years to be like top six Olympian? Well, it could be, I mean, he was ninth, that's only three spots, it could happen, hopefully he won't give up actually, because, as we all know, he has that world-class potential. I mean, he is world-class, but he has the potential to be the best in the world. Like, win the Mr. Olympia. So, is he gonna do it? I mean, I don't really see that desire, that passion, that drive in his voice when he's speaking about bodybuilding and prepping and so on. But can he get to the top six, for example, top five in the next two years? I think it's possible. He is that good. And if he gets there, maybe that leads the fire in him and he starts pushing really hard and actually gets to the very top. That's a scenario that I can potentially see. He has a very complete physique, he's not really lacking anything. He just needs overall a little bit more mass and better conditioning, more maturity, stuff like that. So it can happen. Right now, I don't see it in him. I don't know if he's got it, but maybe something changes. Maybe after his uh, child is born, maybe he, has, maybe he gets a new motivation. I don't know, we'll see, but like, is there potential? Absolutely, there is. We also got a new physique update from Nick Walker one week after the New York Pro. What is Nick Walker doing right now? You can guess, I'm sure he's rebounding, meaning he did not go off of everything and stopped working on improving himself and like uh, focused on health and coming off of stuff, I doubt that is the case, I don't think Nick is a guy like that, I think he's pushing for more growth 
even now and like can he grow anymore i'm not i'm, I'm never gonna say that he can't grow anymore because every time we said it he made more progress so sure yeah his arms can be bigger his shoulders can be bigger his chest can grow he, he his stomach also can grow and it most likely will if he continues doing this can his legs be better and bigger sure yeah they should actually so that's probably gonna be his main focus this this rebound i'm not gonna call it an off season because there isn't a lot of time to you know do an actual off season he's probably gonna stay lean and even though even though he's gonna stay lean he will make progress that's the best time for nick to make progress after show his rebounds are crazy he always makes a ton of progress so i'm expecting an even bigger version of nick walker at a mr olympia i'm just hoping he's gonna practice vacuums and midsection control every single day that should be his main point of focus no doubt i mean legs sure they can be bigger the back can be better to match Derek lansford and so on yeah but you know what is the most important thing for him right now is the midsection control we'll see what kind of changes nick is gonna make before the mr olympia again i am expecting an even improved version i'm expecting a little bit more conditioned version for the mr olympia and i really hope the midsection is gonna look better the waist is gonna be smaller because that's the thing that can make his physique look so much better if he even gets smaller and doesn't make progress but he's gonna get bigger i'm sure his muscles are gonna grow and I just hope the midsection is gonna look somehow smaller, which will create an insane illusion. Whatever you guys think about whichever part of this video, tell me down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. For more content about bodybuilding like this, guys, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.